Welcome to Can I Park Here, brought to you by findafashiontruck.com. Nashe and Estrell's mission is to inspire future and existing small business owners. They don't claim to be experts. They're simply trying to figure this all out, just like you. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Can I Park Here podcast, brought to you by findafashiontruck.com. I'm Nashe Snow, and I'm here with... Estrell Riles. Today, we'll be chatting with Lynn Boone. She's the owner of Urban Pearl, and she operates in Baltimore and Hartford counties. So she moves around quite a bit. And she is great. We love her. Uh, Love her style. Love her truck. And actually, after a post on our Facebook group page, our private Facebook group page, Let's Talk About Fashion Truck, we thought that she would be great to have on here to talk about some of like the ups and downs of owning a fashion truck um, now that she's had one for the past two years. So listen in to find out her story. Here we go. We are excited to have Lynn with us today. Hello, Lynn. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing well. I had a day off today, so I'm doing real well. I had a day off today too, but I had uh, my three nieces in town, nine, eight, and five. So I don't know if that could really count as a day off. Well, and when I say day off, I mean, we're not on the truck. We actually worked in the office. We cleaned up the truck. We did a bunch of things, but it wasn't on the truck. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and why you started the Urban Pearl. Well, I actually had a women's clothing business where I did the manufacturing and sales about, gosh, it's been, I hate to say, about 25 years ago. And um, it was called Pennybacks by Lynn. And it was just kind of a little cottage industry and went through many more jobs and sales and things since then. And I was living out of the country up until two years ago, two and a half years ago when I came back to start this. And I just felt like time was ticking away and I wanted to do something. So I was tossing around, I think I'll go back to the States But this time, instead of manufacturing and selling things, I will just go purchase wholesale and do trunk shows or home shows like I did before. And I was talking to a friend and she said, hey, I know some girls in California doing it. So I kind of looked up everything and it just kind of one thing led to another. And I said to my husband when we were living, we were living down in Grand Cayman, I said, oh my gosh, I found what I want to do. I'm going to buy a truck. We outfit the inside as a boutique and we buy stuff and we sell it. And it's going to be so much fun. (laughs) And he he said, yeah, that's good. You know, keep researching. And when we get back to the States in two or three years, that's a great idea. And I said, no, you don't understand. The train has left the station. I'm going home and I'm going to do this now. So I moved home about two and a half years ago. And I started it with a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends. Um, She's pretty much in it just now for moral support. And she will go shopping with me when she can. But I kind of dragged her into it. So we started looking and researching. And her husband found the truck for us. And off we went. How hard was it to find your truck? Like the right one? Like one that was kind of like easy to drive and had like the size that you were looking for? Because I think you went with the step van, correct? We did. We knew we wanted a larger version. Um, Some people have the smaller versions that are more like 18 feet. We knew we wanted as much space as possible in a truck. We had been in a few and we just thought we want as much space to buy as many things and pack it full as we can get. To be honest, we looked a little bit on Craigslist, but my friend Mary's husband drove by this one on a lot way out in the country. And he said, I saw a truck, took a picture. We knew a little bit about the people. It was a body shop who had it. He went out, talked to them, drove it. And then I went out with him. We both drove it. And he said, I don't think you're going to find anything better. So it was literally, we bought the first truck we found, which was probably not smart, but we did it anyway. Well, hey, well, at least it didn't, didn't take too long. And it sounds like you didn't have to go too far to get it. Either. Not at all. No, it was probably 20 minutes, a half hour max from where we live. How long did this process take? 
I came home, I moved home in end of March, early April. We literally found the truck within a couple of weeks because we'd been talking about it since February. I started talking about it February of 2013, I think it was. I moved home in April, back to the States, and we found a truck almost right away. And I had in my mind, we want to have a soft opening to friends and family end of July we want to open to the public first of August. It was very, very quick. We bought the truck. My friend's husband gutted the whole thing and was working on it at night and on weekends. And I think by the end was ready to kill me because I kept sticking with that August 1st. (laughs) We've got to be on the road August 1st. And we went to um, the fame show in New York in May, end of May, got some stock in. We kind of had a little opening to show people the kinds of things we were doing and we did some teasers on Facebook and got a following and then we did open to the friends and family the last weekend in July of 2013 and then open to the public August 1st so it was very quick from the time I decided to do it to the day we opened the doors now do you mind sharing the initial investment that went into starting the business Yeah, not at all, because I think people tiptoe around that and everybody's a little afraid to say. We paid about seventy-five or seventy seven hundred for our truck. We put a a big generator in an Onion generator that will power heat and air conditioning in the back. And that is one thing I recommend to people. Don't get your truck and outfit the whole thing and get the clothes in and then all of a sudden find out. It's summertime and, hey, I'm in a big tin box and this is hot. What do I do? (laughs) Or it's wintertime and I don't have any heat. What do I do? Get the heat and air conditioning in in the beginning. So we put the generator in. We put the heat pump and air conditioning system, you know, in the top. I would say all of that between generator, heat, air, putting in the switch box and everything, I think cost about eight thousand. We got an expensive generator, so that was eight. Our initial investment in clothing was probably ten thousand to fifteen hundred. I feel like I took forty thousand dollars to start. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe by the time we got on the road, we'd only spent twenty to thirty of it. We broke down right away. I mean, within a couple of weeks, had to oh. get that fixed. Probably broke down three times in the first month and a half or two months. I would say by the time we shut the doors early December, mid-December, I had invested 40000 in it. Now, you know, we had some stock left over, so we were never in the red. And I, I, I put a little bit of money in. I think maybe we started with twenty twenty five, and then I had to put another five, and then another five, you know, as we broke down. And, and we weren't selling too much in the beginning. But Mm -hmm. I would say it it did cost us, and my friend's husband did the entire inside, which cost only supplies, $1,500, Oh, that's good. That's awesome. You can spend up to $20,000 doing that, but, you know, he can build things from the ground up. So he did the whole inside for us. It sounds like, you know, with a truck, like little things will happen, and then you might end up spending like $3,000 here or $4,000 here, depending on like if it's maintenance or something you need to other other things that you need to get fixed so it's like you just have to I guess be prepared for anything with any business though you you make money and then you have to end up reinvesting back into the business exactly and your inclination is to oh I can't wait to buy more clothes and buy more jewelry but you can't forget that you're driving a used truck I had a used truck I always I said four months into it maybe we should have just taken out a loan and bought a new one and make payments on it and not worried about that. But, you know, we had an old truck. I think it's a 1999, maybe. Things are going to happen. Things are going to break down. I've since found out that it seems like whoever had it before me kind of jimmy-rigged everything and put them in upside down and backwards. And every time something goes wrong, the body shop says, well, they put this starter in completely wrong and it right. stripped the gears. And I've had it happen three times. So right. I don't know who had it. But um, but yes, you definitely have to remember that you're driving a used piece of equipment and things are going to go wrong. What type of products do you sell? What's your style? We sell 
it's a little, we used to describe ourselves as classic with a bohemian feel. We have women, girls from age 16 up to women 65 and 70 buying from us. It's a certain type of look that people like. It's a little boho. It's not a lot. It's not like, you know, ripped up and too frayed and everything, but it's a little boho. And it's also, we like to sell things that are fun and spunky. And I, I think that's the comments we get a lot when people come in. They say, your things are so different and they're so fun. Where do you buy your things? And I, I always tell them, we buy from the same shows every other <laughs> shop buys from. It's just that we, we like to pick things that are a little eclectic, a little kind of funky, fun, something with a twist. Something just a little different, but still the 50 year old woman that walks in can't say, oh my gosh, I can't wear any of this. So mostly clothing, but we do sell accessories, purses and necklaces and bracelets. We're getting into where some people are making us some signature uh, jewelry. Our prices range between 25, which is low up to a hundred. We've gone up to 150 before on some things that are really, really unique, hundred percent silk. But, you know, so they'll look and they'll say, well, I could get that bracelet for $30 or I could get another really cute top. Right. And <laughs> most of the time they go for the top. <laughs> now, did you have any advice for like new boutique owners that really haven't had much experience in the retail area? Like, is there, are there any tips for like buying the right clothes for your truck? Mm. So you're not, I guess you know, sitting on inventory or is it just really kind of like trial and error a little bit? Some of it is trial and error. I will buy things that I am sure that piece is going to be a hot seller and that piece sit. What I tell people, you have to develop your own style. I've had the same style. I know what I like and I've, I've known it since I was 15, 16 years old. I know what I like. And I know when I see something, I like that dress. I like that top. In the beginning, I only bought what I like. I think you have to be true to yourself in that. If you like it, you're passionate about it. People will see that. Wear it on the truck. You have to wear it to show them what it looks like. And you have to like wearing it. They will see that. And that's what's going to make things sell. Um, If you say, I'm going to go in and I'm going to just buy all white and black items or all, you know, candy colored items or whatever. How are you going to attract that person if that's not what you like? I, in the beginning said, I'm only buying what I like. Now I have moved out of that some because the more you're out and you're selling, you see what people like, you see what they need. Um, I love bright, colorful, Prince, crazy. Mary, who started this with me, she likes more subdued, solids, a little more classic, a little more traditional. So buying, we really, we complemented each other well. But I've learned to buy some of the more subdued and uh, solid colors. But I, th- mm. I I would recommend to them, just be true to yourself and decide, what am I, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because I want to buy what I like? Do I want, what do I want to offer to people? And my whole life, I had people saying, where do you find your clothes? Where do you get your clothes? You always look so good. So to me, it was buy what I like. I would say that's what they need to to figure out if they're going into retail and they've never been in. And then a lot of it's trial and error. And I see too, like you also sell some of your clothes on your website. Did you start off just with the mobile boutique and then went into like the online sales or did you start both of them at the same time? We started the mobile boutique first. We did have the website from the very beginning, but we didn't sell on the website. We posted our, our schedule. Um, we kind of put some pictures, a little bit of articles, but we started the website a year after we started the boutique for us. The bulk of our selling is on the truck. We would love for the website to sell more, it sells a good bit, especially when we're off the road. Starting in December, January, February, March, it, it sells a lot. But we'd love for it to sell more. It just, I think people still like to come, touch it, feel it, try it on, ask us, does this look good on me? Um, 
you know, they, they want to know they really, we have a lot of customers, great customers, and they do want to come on the truck and see myself or Maggie who works with me now. And they want to say, what, what do you have that I like? Mm -hmm. And we do get to know them and the kinds of things they like. But the website was a year after. Totally random question. Um, I'm looking under the Pearl Party section on the website, and there's a picture with um, some ladies holding your bags. Yes. I love the stickers, and they're they're fairly large. Where did you get those from? I actually worked in the promotional sales industry for 13 years before I did this. So I knew right away that that's what I wanted to do, not get my bags printed, but get stickers because you can use them as giveaways and race bags. You can do a lot of things with them. I have somebody that I order things through. I don't know if you want me to say it here, but I can always, you know, I can always, people can always email me. And I think I, I posted before who I get them through, but I order them through a promotional sales company. And, um, we ordered them. It's kind of funny because we ordered them in bulk when we first started and we literally two years later still have stickers. So oh, wow. <laughs> I, I can't even remember how many I ordered, 2,500 <laughs> maybe, but we still have the stickers, but they are great because you can put them on the bags. I mean, it takes a little time to stick them on there, but you, we stick them on the back of right now. We just have paper gift certificates and we stick it on the back of that. So people can't duplicate it. It's got to have that sticker on it. Um, We give them out, like I said, race bags. Like if people want something, we don't really. This year we started giveaways. We got lip balms. We got some little sunscreen packets. But we didn't have anything like that before. So the stickers were great for that. Okay. Actually, I would love to hear um, what the promotional company is because I'm interested in buying stickers as well. Ah, Okay. Well, it's called Stout Gear. And there's a a really good friend of mine that gets them for me. And she's, um, her name's Valerie. Valerie Garcia, and she just did a bunch of horrible little lip balms for me, and we did sunscreen packets for the summertime. We give them away at checkout, at the checkout. I got the lip balms to sell them, but they were so cute. I couldn't stand it, so I just was giving them to everybody that bought things. (laughs) (laughs) No, When you open that box and you see Urban Pearl Mint Green and your name all over things in the box, it's too cute, so I I just give them out. (laughs) Yeah, and it's great for marketing. It, it is. is. It is. So yeah, we'll we'll make sure to include like um, you know, if she has a special special link, just let us know. But we'll okay. be sure to like put her link and her name in the show notes. So uh maybe she could get some sales. Because yeah, they are cute stickers. <laughs> now normally we hear about all the good things in the re- mobile retail business, but it's all sunshine and lollipops. So can you tell us the real deal? Like, what are the the hardships that you've faced? Or do you have any advice to people who want to jump into the mobile retail business? I can. I could talk about this all night, but I won't. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I love what I do. But I will say it is without a doubt the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, short of having children. (laughs) It's a grueling business. And when I thought about getting into it, I said to my friend, Mary, oh, this is great, Mary. We buy a truck. We go buy clothes. We, we outfit the back. We buy clothes and we sell them. It's so fun. This will be so fun. And 6,000 steps and problems later, <laughs> I still have this business two years later. But I love what I do, but I will say there are so many things to think about. You, well, last week, well, we just got back on the road from being off the road two weeks. The truck broke down. Well, it was having trouble starting and we decided we were tired of holding our breath at each place where we were leaving. So we drove it to the shop and we, we knew they said it has a leak in the fuel line. Okay, fine. It'll take a couple days to fix. Well, leak in the fuel line went to your front shocks are shot, went to, oh my gosh, when we got the engine out, the bolts, one bolt was completely missing to your engine train. And and I'm probably saying this all wrong, (laughs) but, (laughs) and one bolt is loose and that's not safe. That's really dangerous. We need to fix that. So two weeks out of business and $3,000 later, the truck is fixed and back on the road, but we lost, we had to cancel 10 events and... I lost 
maybe ten thousand dollars in the events mm. that I was going to be doing, plus spent three thousand to fix it. If your truck isn't working, you're out of business. That's really hard, and that's one thing that's very different from, I think, a brick and mortar. I've never had a brick and mortar, but the truck can break down and not be working. Um, the other thing is, it's a lonely business, and I would suggest. Don't do it by yourself. Have a partner and have a partner that drives. Um, my partner was fantastic and she did the banking and the bookkeeping and bought with me. Like I said, we're still best of friends. But the bigger we got and the more we grew, it was too much for her. And she said from the beginning, I don't want to drive a big truck. And that was fine by me. But you need another driver. And I did hire somebody in a couple of months ago and she mm. drives the truck now and she's She's on salary. She's fantastic. But you need somebody else to drive, somebody else to go to events, somebody else to help you. When boxes start coming in, you get five, seven boxes at a time, and you've got to hang stuff and steam it and name it and tag it and enter it in your system. And it's overwhelming. So have somebody else, another, you know, a partner that can do that and go into it with your eyes wide open. It's a, it's a tough business. It's, it's driving a truck. It's a big truck. People don't treat you the way they should on the road. So you kind of, you put your blinker on, I got to get over. I'm nervous. I've just been driving it a couple of weeks and they won't let you in. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. um, I would just say, you know, it's fun. It's very fun, but there's a whole background to it. I don't know. I just think I went into it thinking I buy things and I sell things. And there's a ton of other stuff that goes with it. And I'm so happy I've learned all of that. I've learned so much and I'm so happy. But even last week, I was crying to my husband saying, you know, if it weren't for Maggie and I hadn't hired her on salary, I might be quitting now. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's, I mean, one week you're that down. And then the next week we had a busy weekend at a place, a regular stop. And we sold hand over fist. And I was just like, oh, thank the Lord. You know, like I'm enthused yeah. again. I'm happy again. It's good again. So you have those ups and downs. It is a total roller coaster business. Are you, do you have any complications at events or it, does it all run smoothly? A lot of times we've gotten to events and they have us in a place maybe, you know, right next to the pit beef guy where his beef smoke is all going to come back in our door. Uh, and we say, no, we can't do that. And they have to move us. Sometimes we get to events and no matter how much you send them pictures and tell them how big you are, they have you in a 10 by 10 or a 20 by 20. And I'm 26 feet with my step. And then you have to sit and wait for them to find a spot. But overall, I did, uh, our generator stopped running one time. But there was a plug. Fortunately, we got the plug also, and they had an electrical socket we could plug into. On the whole, most of the time, the events that, that you've scheduled run pretty smoothly. And that is, uh, on another subject, why we pop up sometime. I know some trucks just go pop up in locations. We have found we'd rather go with events, even though we have to pay for them, not expensive ones. But we would rather book events or, and I call events like we have the last weekend of full weekend of every month at a shabby chic kind of furniture, big furniture place. I call that an event. It's not really. They ask us to come park there to bring in business for them and they bring in business for us. I would rather do things like that than just go find a parking spot on the street and pop up. And I think the advice you gave was great. Like, you know, the three biggest things that I took away that people need to keep in mind is like, like you were saying with the truck, number one, you're going to have to pay maintenance on it. Things are going to break down. They're going to go wrong. So not only do you have to have money to fix the truck, but then also while your truck is off the road, you could be losing thousands of dollars. Exactly. And, you know, and then I think the other bit of advice, having a partner, you know, even if it's not someone who's total 50-50 with you, but even like in a sales associate, just someone mm -hmm. there with you is great. And then the eyes wide open, you know, about like how difficult it could be, like, you know, even, you know, just driving because, yeah, I know like when trucks are on the road, I'm probably kind of guilty too. Like, oh, let me just, 
try to stay in front of them because they're, you know, like driving too slow. So I can yeah. only imagine like when you're in a truck, you're like, wait, hey, don't cut me off. Like I'm, yeah, I'm here too over. on the road. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so no, I think it's like great things for people to keep in mind, especially people who are just starting out and they really don't know what this is about. You know, you have maybe some people who are coming from a brick and mortar and they've experienced the up and downs from a business, but I feel like a lot of people that we've encountered are just starting this fresh. They don't know anything. So this is, this is really good information. Yeah. And even in and regards is- to having a partner, that's even kind of tricky. Well, not having a partner per se, but hiring somebody to help you. Yes. When you first start off, it's like you don't really have any income coming in to pay somebody. So what do you do even though you still need the help? Like even with Mache and I, we've been thinking about hiring an intern to help us like with social mm-hmm. media and stuff like that. But it's like, I don't want to pay anybody. <laughs> right. So you know. I did, yes, I got an intern my first, gosh, I can't even remember now it all goes together, but <laughs> I did have a fantastic intern. Um, I knew her mom and she helped me at events. And it's just even like when they come and they help you kind of organize the racks, it's something simple. Like you can say, do you think I have my rack appealing? Does it look good? And they'll say, well, let me organize it a little bit. You know, do you organize it by color? Do you organize it by style? You know, how do you want to organize it? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just a different point of view. And I think, I'm pretty sure the first intern I had, I just gave her huge discounts or gave her some clothing. Um, And then I had Maggie come on and I paid her. I did say, you know, here, I'm going to pay you. And I have another intern, Danielle, who's fantastic. She helps me at one end of the county and Maggie works at the other. But then it got to a point where it was so busy and Maggie really needed full-time work. Um, even though she was helping me probably 15, maybe even 20 hours a week, but she needed a full-time job. And I was panicky. I can't do this without her. So I hired her in salary and she works 30 hours a week and she's on salary. And we joke because I haven't taken any money out for myself yet. It builds up in the bank account and I'm pretty sure by the end of this year, I'll be able to, but I haven't yet. (laughs) But we joked when she signed the papers that I said to her, you know, this is probably the only time in your life you'll make more money than your boss. So enjoy it. <laughs> and, uh, but she's fantastic. She has learned the job, the business from the ground up. And like I said, she can do anything. I'll be away on vacation in about a week and she's going to do everything while I'm gone. And she's fantastic. But it took a long time to find that. And it takes just the right person. It's not easy to find a woman who has style, who likes to sell, who wants to drive a big truck. Those and things don't always somebody happen. that you trust with your yes. business. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and things are going to happen. You know, there's going to be little fender benders or there's going to be a oh, whoops, you know, as long as it's not something big, I say, well, we can fix that. What advice do you have for future mobile boutique owners? Is there like one or two things that you think that they must do? One thing I think is just, I think what I've seen is most people do have a passion for it. You have to have a driving passion for not necessarily, I mean, yes, fashion, um, but know what you like. Um, Mm. You can't just randomly buy and put it on the racks and hope it's going to sell. It (laughs) might, but if you don't have a passion for it and you don't know how to tell people to put it together, it may not work. And the other thing I would say is it's going to take time. It's not, I think a lot of people feel like, oh my gosh, I, kind of like I did. I'm going to buy clothes. I'm going to put them in the back of a truck and I'm going to sell and I'm going to make a profit in six months. This is going to be great. It doesn't happen. Maybe it does for some people, but I think it takes just as long as any new business. They say it takes three to five years to turn a profit mm-hmm. in a new business. And I believe that's true. I've I've never been in the red. I haven't taken any money out for myself. I let it 
sit in the account. Fortunately, I can do that. I do know people who are supporting themselves on it, but I let it sit in there so that when I did blow up the generator, I I could put a new one in. When the truck did break down, I could fix it. When I needed to hire Maggie, I can pay her salary. But I think by the end of this year, it will turn around, not turn around, but we'll see a huge difference. I mean, from September to December, it's like the doors fly open and people can't buy enough. That's when you do a lot of business in the spring and in the, in the fall. And I would just say, be patient, be patient. And you're going to want to quit once a month, but stick to it. (laughs) (laughs) Talk to somebody rant on your find a fashion truck site (laughs) and and just stick with it because I think in the end it's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really neat thing. It's a neat novel thing to do. I do hope to have a brick and mortar in a year or so, but I think the way to get started is start a truck and get your feet wet and see, do I have a knack for this? Are people buying what I choose? What POS system do you use? Have you changed since you've been in the business or have you always used the same one? We've used the same one. We use NCR Silver System and it was recommended to us. There's some things I really, really like about it. We wanted a point of sale through the iPad. We didn't just get the square to put on our um on our phones, we ha- it's a whole point of sale system. There's a back office. There's a, you know, you enter things in. We can send our newsletter out of there. Mm. There's some things. The biggest thing is it doesn't link up with our QuickBooks, which is how we have our, all of our bookkeeping. But they're working on that. Um, okay. I have heard there's some easier ones. I think there's one called Vend that I've yeah, heard I've of. I've heard that. of that one. Yeah. But we have we have um, NCR Silver, and for the most part, they've been very good. They have a, you know, you can call them any time, day or night, with a problem. If a piece of equipment's faulty, they ship another piece right out. They've been pretty good. It's pretty good. I just, if it would link into QuickBooks, it would be perfect because right now, if we sell on our website, we have to go in every day. Like when we have a busy day, we have to go in every day to the inventory and pull it out of the website. If everything mm. linked in together, it could pull it out of inventory on the website right away. Mm. So we wouldn't oversell something. Okay. But I've been happy with it. And I would say it was about 3000 3500 That was another expense from the beginning. And is, is a flat fee or was that just to start um, off? That was how much it cost to buy the equipment, get the whole system downloaded onto our iPad. Then we pay $79 a month to WorldPay, and they, um, they monitor the credit card. Mm-hmm. So when we swipe the credit card in, WorldPay puts it into our system. They were recommended by NCR Silver, and I've never had any problem with that at all. It's $79 a month. Because I think some this system also is used by like brick and mortar stores, and mm-hmm. it's like so. I feel like once you start to get like a significant amount of sales, like this this system is kind of a heavy duty system, and it allows you to do a lot of stuff and gives you stats and all the the other goodies that come along with it. Yeah, it does, and a lot of people don't do it from the very beginning. We just It was the same with the generator and the air conditioner and the heat. You know, I thought if I'm going into this, I'm going to do everything right from the beginning. I don't want to say six months down the road, oh, shoot, I'm handwriting receipts and this is driving me crazy. So (laughs) we got it from the very beginning and um, that was in that twenty to forty thousand dollars. No, that's perfect. Well, we are going to um, just ask a few personal questions to help the audience get to know you a little bit better. Sure. (laughs) <laughs> so do you have a favorite podcast or blog? And if so, what is it? Oh, gosh, that's a, not a good question. Because <laughs> <laughs> or book or magazine. Embarrassingly <laughs> enough, I'm a little out of the age group where the blog started. So I never really followed blogs, podcasts. I mean, the only ones I ever really listened to were NPR and not that much. (laughs) Um, And honestly, once I started this business, I I mean, 
I work 70 hours a week. I work mm. all the time. It's really mm. bad. <laughs> so wow. I don't have that much time. I have listened to your podcasts and I really <laughs> like them. Um, but I don't, um, magazines, I mean, I'll tell you, the only time I even have time to get a, read a magazine anymore is on a flight, which I used to fly a lot when I went back mm. and forth from Grand Cayman when I lived there before I moved back. I used to be in two book clubs. I hardly have time to read books and, and even look at magazines anymore. So, um, I get the magazines to kind of brush up on style things, but I depend on when I go to the shows to see what's walking around. Um, (laughs) but I mean, I, I absolutely love fashion magazines. I just don't have time anymore. Bloggers. We do have a blogger that, um, follows us and we do things with her a lot in Baltimore, but I just, don't have time. It's awful to say. Now the 70 hours a week, is that just because you're doing primarily like inventory and a lot of events and that's what really taking up a lot of your time? It is. I do it Mm. full time. So, and I handle some of our social media, although I've turned some of that over. I have hired in, um, an Instagram, a a girl who does my Instagram, my niece. Um, and the beauty of it is I'm in Baltimore. She's in Nevada. She does handles my Instagram for me and she's fantastic. Our Instagram is at shop urban Pearl and she does the cutest little pictures all the time. Um, um, hired a friend in Cayman. She does all my website. I mean, she's always telling me, you've got to know this just in case anything happens to me. Like I get hit by a bus and I'm like, could you just not get hit by a bus? Because I really need to. <laughs> so she does all my, um, my newsletters, all my website things. Um, she didn't build it. We had it built by somebody else, but she does the whole website. And, um, so I've surrounded myself with these people that can do all these other things. But mm. yeah, it's, you know, you get up in the morning and you post on Facebook and you make sure Megan's posted on Instagram and you post on Instagram and then, you know, you check all that and then inventory is coming in all the time and Maggie comes over and we unbox and we tag and we name and we enter. I probably work on it too much, but because I work out of my house, I never yeah. cut it off. It's just a right. lot of work. Started. <laughs> it's now because of Maggie. Yeah, but right. it's, it's work. if you're going to do it full time, it's like starting up a business. You, there's always something else you can do. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's a lot. Sounds like it, but it sounds like you love it too. It's I do lot, love but, it. Yeah. <laughs> I love clothes. I love clothes. I <laughs> absolutely, you know, when I say, I don't want to do this anymore to my husband. And then I think to myself, oh gosh, I'd have to go back to the mall and shop. And I really don't want to do that. <laughs> right, right, um, right. Carry things that the malls don't carry. We carry different name brands and there's so many different things to pick from. And I absolutely love going to uh, magic out in Vegas and fame in New York and Atlanta, the apparel mart. I just mm. love it. And I recommend to people to do that. That's a really important thing to go do that. Don't just order off the web, go see it, touch it, get a rapport with the wholesalers. If you could have any celebrity entertainer, model, sports person, anybody you will anybody visit your mobile boutique, who would it be? This is probably only because two of them, maybe. And only because they've been in the news a lot lately and they're always talked about how well they dress and how cute they are and how good they look would be um, Pippa Middleton because she always looks so cute and everybody always says how good she looks. The other one I would say because she's so stunningly gorgeous and I don't care if she buys a thing off the truck, but if she would just come on, you know, <laughs> is um, George Clooney's wife. These are people that have a classic style with a little quirky edge. And that's our, that's us. I mean, yeah. certainly not to that degree, but that's us. We have classic style with a quirky edge. And those are the people I think of that are like, I look at them and I go, they are so classy. And yet they've got a little bit of a quirkiness to them in what they wear. When you do have just a smidgen of free time, what do you do to wind down and de-stress? I, I walk my puppies. I take them to the park. I take them to my mom's and let them run around free there since we live in the city. Everybody knows our puppies. It's Buzz and Woody, and they're the truck mascots. 
<laughs> I watch Criminal Minds with my oldest daughter. <laughs> she <laughs> loves that. I sit and chat with my youngest daughter because she's a hoot. She also models for me. She was the face of Urban Pearl for a long time. She's hilarious. I love talking to her. Um, I love going to have crabs with my son. We're in Baltimore. So, of course, we like our steamed crabs. And um, I go to Grand Cayman sometimes to visit friends and my husband, although I don't get that much time. He has to come up here. I don't get that much time anymore. But Mm -hmm. I love to go down there and relax and sleep late, hit the beach, watch the sunsets. I lived there for seven years. So that's nice to do. And I do love to read. I I have two book clubs and I never get to read their books. So if I had time, I'd go to the book club meetings just to visit. And I love to have a glass of wine with a friend. I'll meet a friend for a glass of wine. So (laughs) sounds awesome. I need a beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, the beach in Cayman, watch the sunset, have a glass of wine. That happens about once every three or four months now. And then Android or iPhone? And also, do you have a favorite app? Um, well, it's hilarious. I have to admit that I had a BlackBerry until about two months ago. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even think to put that one in the question. <laughs> Uh, it finally died. We were at a, we were at the Bethesda Women's Farmers Market where I go with some friends um, with the truck. It died, and I had to go down to the Verizon store and spend the entire time there. So fortunately, Maggie ran the truck by herself, and I got a Droid. A, a lot of people just said to me, "Don't get the iPhone." You're locked into Apple products. You're locked into <laughs> Apple chargers. So I have the Droid. And I love it, okay. um, but I'm still learning it because it's just a baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, apps, gosh, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, because you've just, yeah, really started to probably play around with it. Yeah, and I mean, one app, I, I love the pictures it takes, and I love. I think somehow I got the collage app where you can put a couple pictures together. Mm-hmm. Although Maggie and I were driving somewhere the other day and I had to ask her, can you find that collage app? I know it's on there somewhere. I just, I did it once. I just don't know how I did it. And <laughs> she found it for me, but, um, but I love it. I do love it. Um, unfortunately in my haste to try to get to an event the other day, the day we got the truck back, I dropped it and cracked the screen. <laughs> so <Ooh. laughs> it's okay. It still works and I can oh, still good. see everything. But, um, oh, good. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm still learning it. It's still very new. And again, it takes time either on a train to New York or on a plane somewhere where I have nothing else to do to sit and fiddle with it and find out what it can do. Now he- You'll never have anybody tell you that they just got rid of a BlackBerry. You'll never have that again. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's really sad. It's really sad. <laughs> Okay, so our final question is, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? If I knew I couldn't fail, mm, I might run for president. Oh, yeah. and honestly, I never thought I never thought about it before. But when you just said that at this point in time, at this point in the way things are, I, I, I never would have said that. I don't know why that <laughs> popped out of my mouth. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> Couldn't fail, right? Yeah, that I, means you could do anything you want. So yeah, that means yeah. like if you ran, you would win. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I would win or I would be a total success. <laughs> oh, right, right. Well, you know, I mean, hey, if you're not failing, you'd be a success. You would win the election and be a great president. <laughs> yeah, I might do that. Hey, there you I, go. I would or I would be in charge of, I used to do a lot of nonprofit charity work before I worked Mm. and, or I would want to run a nonprofit that would totally turn things around on hunger and the environment and just something like that. But if I was president, I could do that. Yeah, you could. You can delegate, so I, right? And you'd have that more money. Of, yeah. I can't <laughs> hey. But if I couldn't fail, if I would be a success, 
why not? People, so many people dislike you, but I don't care about <laughs> yeah. that. That's why you yeah, have secret I, service. <laughs> like that. I think I'd do something like that. Yeah. Although I wouldn't awesome. want to be in the spotlight. I don't think I'd want to be in the spotlight. So I changed that. I think I'd want to run a nonprofit that really, really made a difference in the world. That's what I'd want to do. Yeah, I don't want to be in the I don't want to be in the limelight. Take me out of the presidential race. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Because you would be like directly in the spotlight. Yeah. Every word you said, the media would hang on to. Yeah. <laughs> and they would follow you everywhere. Oh, they dig up my past. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I want to run a nonprofit and do something really good to help help the world. Yeah, that's, that's what awesome. I want. And then, Lynn, where can the uh, audience find you? Uh, what's the best, uh, like, maybe um, best way to, to, to get in touch with you? Well, on our, we have uh, the website, everything they can always, if you just Google Shop Urban Pearl, most everything is under that. Um, our website, uh-oh, we have, oh, we have Buzz and Woody barking. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> um, our website, uh, we have a calendar on there. We have our email on there. Um, they can always look us up on Instagram. It's at Shop Urban Pearl. Um, we're on Facebook at Shop Urban Pearl, and we post on everything regularly. Our Facebook goes right out to Twitter, so we're on Twitter. So they can pretty much find us on any social media, and everything is Shop Urban Pearl. So they can find us any number of places like that. And we post our schedule all the time. We have a calendar on our website. And I mean, we're always, we have had a lot of people ask us about, you know, about meeting with them to talk about starting a truck. And we just, we, we don't have time during the busy season as awful as that is to say. So this is nice Mm -hmm. that y'all are doing this and nice that you all have your find a fashion truck because it's a fantastic platform for helping people from the little tiny minute thought in their head that it might be good for them right on through having one where I am two and a half years later and still wanting to vent on your page sometimes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, they can, they can find us on Instagram, Facebook, the website, all of that. Yeah, and thanks thanks a lot for that, Lynn. And, and for all the listeners out there, you can join our private Facebook group. Let's talk about fashion trucks. And Lynn is a member too. And so seasoned fashion trucks um, chime in all the time, giving advice. And it's great conversation on there. People are very honest and candid. And it's also about kind of just like sharing, sharing items in your truck, sharing photos of your truck. So it's, it's really, I feel like, a positive environment and also a great environment to just learn what it really takes to open up a fashion truck. So yeah, it, yeah. it's fantastic. What you ladies have done is fantastic. It's really, it's great for everybody. So thank you. No, thanks. And thanks for coming on the show. Sure. I love it. Thanks <laughs> yeah. for asking me. It was fun. Man, got some great tips from Lynn. I mean, from the truck maintenance to having a partner to going in with your eyes wide open. I think this was a great episode for anyone thinking about starting a fashion truck. So they have kind of like a good foundation and they understand kind of what some of the hardships will be uh, when they start it so they could prepare for it. Yeah, so bottom line, if you want to get into the mobile retail business, just be prepared. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, you're probably going to have issues. There's no way of getting around that. But if you know ahead of time that it's going to happen and it's not all sunshine and lollipops, then it'll be better for you. It won't be such a big hit in the face like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening to me because you're no, you know ahead of time that it is going to happen. No doubt about it. So Mm -hmm. just prepare yourself. Some other nuggets she gave, we didn't really go into this too much, but she talked about like magic and some of the other places that she goes to to buy clothes for her truck. And you definitely do have to have a love for this business. Like you shouldn't just go to go like you should be someone who loves fashion and who wants to help people look better and who wants to go to these different events. Like it has to be a passion of yours if you're going to put this many hours into it, knowing like, 
with any business, it'll take a while to turn a profit. So that means that you need to love what you're doing, even if you're not able to really pay yourself yet. Make sure you have somebody to help you. You can't do everything alone, not in this business. It's just not going to happen. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, If you have any questions, feel free to send us a message or you can go to our website, startafashiontruck.com, and there is an ask FFT button where you can leave us a voice message or you can send us a message via the contact form. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at FFT underscore official underscore. And you can find us on Google Plus, Facebook, or Pinterest by just typing in find a fashion truck. And of course, the directory is at findafashiontruck.com. If you're a new boutique owner and you want to get to our podcast or our our blog, please go to the startafashiontruck.com site. And thanks again. Thanks for parking here.